Are all white men colonizers? Are all Asian women sellouts? And are all Asian guys internet incels? Those are some questions that were raised by this viral article. All right, everybody, if you're excited, please hit that like button and let's get into this. Welcome everybody to the Hot Pop Boys. David and Andrew here. We're talking about this viral article that is about white men and Asian women. So real quick, the author Elaine Cho is an Asian woman who mostly dates white men, but feels very, very conflicted about it because a portion of white men have a very condescending entitlement over Asian women. And it can turn to be very ugly. Yeah, this was a really interesting article that came out last week. And I would say that if you are Asian American, and you went to college, there's probably somebody in your circle of friends that has read this article. It went hyper viral in a world, not the world, but in the Asian world. I was actually fascinated by how many different lenses that people could view the same stimulus by. So we combed through a bunch of the comments through the article on Reddit, on Twitter, and these are the four main comments we saw and we're gonna analyze them. They also represent four different viewpoints that we find very interesting. All right, number one came from a lot of white guys that were offended by Elaine Cho's article. One of the most common things was a little bit defensive attitude saying, whoa, 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 that's not all us white guys. That ain't me and my friends. I'm married to a Chinese woman. I ain't never thought none of this evil stuff ever before. So here's the truth on that comment. Of course, not all white guys are like evil. Our portion is a one slice of the ratio distribution pie totally the problematic and toxic and you know having that dominant colonizer mindset i'm sure it is but i do think one thing is interesting andrew that a lot of people don't understand about pie distribution ratios because not everybody in society lives the most ultra holistic life it depends on what slice you're exposed to for example if you only date frat boys that are part of like sigma zeta mm -hmm. you might get exposed to more problematic type guys if you date guys who are like soy drinking like soft boys, you might get exposed to guys who don't rank as high on the problematic meter. And that's your exposure as an individual. Yes, it does. There is definitely a tinge of toxic masculinity across the board because if you've ever been in a locker room with any type of guy, there are some conversations like, I'm not trying to say Asian guys cannot be toxic at all, but I will say it definitely feels like non-Asian men sometimes feel a certain entitlement over Asian women that even Asian men don't feel. And yeah. that's always been really weird to me. It's not all white guys. It's actually a lot of other types of men too. So anyway, wrapping up, that's what a lot of white guys have been saying in there. Some all white guys have also been calling out the problematic ones while basically framing themselves as the non-problematic ones. So that was interesting. Another very interesting comment that seemed to be coming from possibly other minority women that were non-Asian was, Hey, why are you surprised about this? I already assumed that white men said vile stuff about us anyways. Wow, I would say that these were actually the most interesting comments that had the longest reply chains in both the comments section and in Reddit. What is this comment trying to say and what is it getting at? Is it getting at the potential privilege, and well, I'll put privilege in quotes, of certain Asian women or Asian people? That's I believe it was from a lot of black and Latina women Obviously, some black and Latina women do also date white guys. But the truth is, I think that black and Latina women, on average, date white men at a much lower rate than Asian women do. I think that she was pointing out that what privilege you have, Miss Elaine Cho, to ever believe until you were 25 years old that white men would say anything but vile dominating things about having sex with you. Dude, this is pointing to some very much deeper dynamics that would take much longer to break down. Yeah, we don't have time to get all into it in this video. Regardless, it's that a lot of people feel like certain groups of Asian women, maybe particularly East Asian women who are educated, um, who are maybe of Christian background or very, very Westernized, that they tend to lean into whiteness to the point where they forget that they're a minority and they forget that white dudes will, when, it, when they're in the locker room, the white dudes will talk about you like, well, you're just crazy. Well, like you're just a very different species <laughs> yeah. and probably a species that, and by the way, we like we said earlier, not all, probably a species that ranks lower than them on the power scale. Yeah, there's also an assumption, trust me, that the white guys feel like 
that Asian women really, really like them. Like all Asian women. That's that's what a lot of white guys think. Yeah. So I think that basically these were fascinating comments, probably written by black women, from what I could tell, basically accusing Asian women of saying, hey, listen, I'm not saying your pain isn't real, but I'm shocked that you're shocked. And there was a tinge of sassiness, like, I guess that's what you get for thinking you were white. Yeah. Kind of like, well, welcome to the club. Welcome to the Minority Women Club. Another comment, which I believe was probably left by a lot of Asian guys who've had this conversation before, uh, because obviously the white man, Asian woman pairing is very, very popular amongst the world, to be honest. It basically said, hey, I know that the author is acknowledging all these horrific things that she's heard, but she does not tell Asian women to stop dating white men. So why are they still doing it? Yeah, there were some comments from some like Asian internet guys, and forgive me for the voice, but they're probably like, hey, I believe you because I saw my sister and some of my cousins go through the same thing. But um, how come at the art at the end of the article, it just seems like you basically say, I just need to find better white guys and just be more, you know, have a better filtration system. But you don't stop loving them. It sounds like you still love them a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think as Asian guys uh, who are kind of outside of this dynamic, who feel like their impact is very minimal, if anything at all, um, it's kind of like Asian guys are sitting here. No, no, what do you mean impact is very little? Because we feel heavily impacted by this pairing. No, no, they feel, Asian men feel impacted. But as an Asian guy, you feel impacted by this pairing as far as like the dating pool and the dynamics of race and sex and everything. But you don't feel like you can have an impact. No. Like you cannot do anything about it because Asian men, uh, I do think uh, I've heard that some Asian men do give like the side eye to like Asian women who date white guys, but there's not like a lot of like public shaming per se. And Well, like, Asians are pretty quiet. Yeah, you know, we're pretty like, people, we just yeah. kind of, we just kind of deal with it and then blast it out on the internet, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. Asian guys, I think they might even like see it in public and just not like look the other way and then just go home and be like, first of all, let me say this. I think that all Asian guys acknowledge this dynamic. You'd be hard pressed to find more than like 10% of Asian guys who say, ah, I don't care at all. But obviously when you feel like you can't impact something, it's not beneficial to care. You try your hardest to not care because like you said, what are you gonna do anyway? Yeah, I do feel like a lot of Asian guys are like, man, I wish she told women to stop dating white guys at the end of the article. And I'm like, listen, at the end of the day, even if she said that, that's not gonna change anybody's mind. One article does not change your behavior. Okay, it's it's great for acknowledgement and it's spreading awareness, but one article cannot change people's minds. I'll tell you this, if people want kale salads because kale salads have been marketed as like the healthiest for you, the highest class, you know, the best, the coolest, and they go to one spot and they eat one bad kale salad. Do you think they're just like done off kale forever? Or are they just like gonna be more discriminating to go to like the best elite, you know, black sea salt kale salads from like the better ranked restaurants, right? Cause they want the kale. If you guys get what I mean. I, a lot of people still eat kale salads. Yeah, they want the Caleb from West Elm, yeah. AKA the kale. I, they, they want it even though they know it's like got a chance of being bad. They just keep rolling the dice. Yeah, it is interesting, though. Obviously, on the subreddit, you got more of the, you know, angry comments as well from, you know, the Asian guys. And the fourth most common comment, this is probably the one that I saw the most, especially on Twitter, mostly by Asian women or women alike. Thank you for writing this. This was very emotional and tough for me to read because I have gone through similar experiences. This culture needs to change. I think people across the board, whether you're an Asian woman or woman or, or a non-Asian woman, they're very thankful that Elaine wrote this. Right. And it was well written and it's going to get spread. Listen, I posted this uh, article on my IG story and it got a thousand link clicks. I right can't off think of IG is crazy. I can't think of anything else I could have posted that would get that many link clicks. So I'm glad I could spread the article with people. It's just something that touched on something that is hyper relevant to, you know, 25 to 45 year olds in terms of all the different responses that we saw from the article. They represented different perspectives and different agendas, you know? Yeah, and I think here's the thing. If the four different viewpoints are not empathizing with each other and only caring about their own selves. They're then, only their skin yeah, in the game. Then right? it's gonna be like Asian guys are gonna say, hey, Asian women, this is your problem. The non-Asian women are gonna be like, Asian women, this is your problem. And then Asian women are gonna be like, yo, I'm feeling like attacked. I'm feeling like this fetishization is poisonous, it's toxic. And then white men are just gonna be like, I don't know, it's still working. I'm still gonna go ahead and do whatever I do. 
Right. You know? Yeah. So, but but that's why it's important that we have the conversation and we hear each other out so we can empathize because obviously, overall, the entitlement over women and taking Asian and white out of it, it's probably something that needs to change. It's something that needs to change and and men overall probably could do a better job of just kind of like removing some of the most toxic language and thoughts out of it. But obviously, to be honest, white men being the dominant group of the past 250 years, they're kind of acting like the colonizers of it all. Yeah, I mean, I think that all men can be better. I think the article was obviously pointing to some larger dynamics, but the larger dynamics were manifesting themselves more so in personal anecdotes. And um, my final takeaway on this article after we've analyzed everything is just like, uh, I guess I'm glad to see more discussion on it, but it kind of goes to show you that that 25 to 45 year old range, man, they're just confused. You know, I just feel like it's just like, uh, it's something to me that I'm like, all these dynamics that she wrote in the article to me are like hyper obvious for whatever life I've lived or the things that I've seen or things I know people that have gone through things, but by all means, I'm glad that she wrote it. To me, I kind of look at this article just like I would look at a protest or a rally against Asian hate. You know, it doesn't stop Asian hate. It doesn't stop these incidences from happening. And it may not even reach the most problematic people. Like the super problematic white men are not even going to read this whole article, you know, that need to read They don't read, read anything on the cut. But, but, yeah. <laughs> but it's really a lot of the other people who need to get together and they're going to feel like, oh, we can take action or we can stand up for Asian women next time or we can stand up for women next time. You know, like if you're around a bunch of guys who are saying this and that, you know, growing oh, up. People used to say dude, crazy stuff to me yeah. in high school. But I will yeah. tell you this. To be fair, there was a couple Asian chicks that were, you know, a lot of people... We're messing with. We're messing with. And people used to say crazy stuff to me in the yeah. locker room on my same sports team. Yeah. But they didn't even mean it to go against Asians. They were just like, yeah, yeah. it was crazy. Well, well, it's just like, listen, white guys out there who obviously don't want to be painted like this. Guess what? Welcome to the world of being a minority guy and being defined by your worst apples. Asian guys, we get defined by our bottom apples. Black men get defined by that. White guys, this is just, this is how the conversation goes, unfortunately. So obviously we all wish our bad apples weren't there, but again, we all, it's just maybe it, it's time. We have to talk about in this. In a way, you would probably say that white guys are happier that they're so dominant they're becoming whack versus just being whack whack. Oh. Yeah, I would probably imagine that the white guys out there that are written about in this article are still happy about that. Just an know. idea. I don't we know. don't know. Leave it in the comments down below, guys. This is an interesting conversation that needs to happen more because the problem is not going to be solved tomorrow. But it is very unfortunate. I hope that Elaine Cho finds the peace that she wants moving forward or at least is on that journey and that that peace begins, you know, spinning the wheels as well. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for watching the Hot Pop Boys. Please leave it in the comments down below what you thought of this article or what you think about this dynamic. I would really encourage you to read the article if you can, or at least read some reviews about it. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.